From deep in the heart of Texas comes a stab in the heart of enemy tank columns. Tank destroyers, developed in increasing numbers, have helped destroy the myth of the vaunted Nazi Mark VI Tiger tank. No tank can withstand the firepower of the three-inch gun motor carriage M10, manned by this five-man crew. Gun commander, gunner, loader, assistant driver, and driver. Each man to his assigned position for a demonstration of the TD's performance. Today, this is the last word in tank destroyer. Tomorrow, it may be supplanted by a lighter, lower, faster, and more lightly armored vehicle, without sacrificing the firepower and effectiveness shown in this film. But make no mistake about the TD we are now demonstrating. It's big and tough, and we'll show you later how maneuverable. And its KO punch is already too familiar to the opposition. Basically, it consists of the hull of the M4 tank, with special turret and the three-inch high-velocity gun. This is the TD's principal weapon. A secondary weapon is the 50 caliber machine gun, used primarily for anti-aircraft, and normally not fired when the principal weapon is in action. Note the bustle-like effect below the 50 caliber gun. Actually, it's 3,200 pounds of counterbalance. Either of the gunners or the gun commander himself handle the 50 caliber under combat conditions. Ready to button up. Driver and assistant close the hatches, and the cameraman follows them inside for a close-up study. As quickly as the driver gets downstairs, he installs the front and side periscopes. The driver's instrument panel is as complicated as you'd find in a bomber. He steers the vehicle by clutch brakes and is now taking ready position at the levers. Before going upstairs, the driver reverses the procedure just shown. About 40 tank destroyers are tested daily at Camp Hood. They put the new TDs through the most difficult paces, actually trying to break them down. By the time they get into battle action, they're seasoned veterans so far as taking the bumps and kills are concerned. Two diesel engines power the M10, and it carries sufficient fuel for approximately 200 miles of operation. It has a 48-inch boarding depth, which can be materially extended by use of field expedients. Climbing a 28% grade without the use of track browsers is another assignment that can be taken in stride. This rolling giant has excellent cross-country characteristics. Maximum speed on good roads, 32 miles per hour. Note that the drivers have been well advised as to the advantages of keeping proper distance between vehicles. Note, too, the stability of the vehicle as it tears off hundreds of yards with smooth, sprinter-like precision. Without too much stretch of the imagination, you can visualize this tank destroyer tearing up the desert sands in Africa, raring to spit destructive fire at enemy tanks. So, the next step is to show how the guns are checked and made ready for action. The TD rolls up into position for these tasks to be accomplished.
Here we go. Hatches closed. Muzzle cover removed by the gun commander, who quickly returns to his position. Then, he connects the leads to the headset of the intercommunication telephone system. Removal of the breech cover is one preliminary assignment given to the loader. Next, he inspects the breech and bore. The gunner checks the manual firing mechanism. Here you are witnessing the results of careful instruction and planning. Proper care and maintenance give assurance that parts and components will be in working order. After removing the locking pin, the gunner opens his sight port. Then, unlocks the traversing lock and the turret is ready to spin. Note the position of the gunner's arms as left hand operates elevating wheel and right hand the traversing wheel. Only plenty of practice brings this type of efficient operation. The gun traverses 360 degrees and can be fired at any place within that circle. In other words, a stable gun mount in any position. Incidentally, to help eliminate excessive cranking, closest synchronization between gunner and driver is maintained for shifting the vehicle. Everything checked, everything tested. So we move on to the target range. And en route, the TD has a chance to prove it's also a good mudder. Once again, an opportunity to witness how readily the M10 takes the rough going. Slit trenches included. Proper cover and concealment are always vital. The TD is thus exposed only for the purpose of this demonstration. The assistant driver checks the terrain at his vantage point and advises both gun commander and driver. He is also the radio operator, the SCR 610 shown in the picture. The loader gets a shell from the ready rack and with one sweeping motion inserts the shell and on the follow through taps the gunner on the back, lightly so as not to destroy his aim. The firing button is on the elevating wheel. For indirect firing, the panoramic sight is used. The gun commander demonstrates manual firing. See for yourself the timing, the rapidity of fire, the stability of the gun carriage. Another interesting point. When in a dusty area, the muzzle blast is sufficient to kick up a dust cloud, visible to the enemy. Therefore, to keep up its effectiveness, the TD's location must be constantly shifted. Firepower tests of the three-inch gun, okay. So it's off to the wars for another shipment of tank destroyers. They've passed the most grueling tests. Only the best have survived. And when they reach destinations now veiled in military secrecy, they'll prove their worth through faultless performances. Invention and military application will keep up the flow of TDs until the final knockout has been achieved.